In this video, we'll discuss STT's job validation tool and the job validation reports. So on the ribbon, we have a job validation button here that's accessible, and then it also can be found on the Job Explorer ribbon tab here. This is a batch command that processes it as its own exe. Again, you want to have all your entities and objects with property sets on them, data filled out, and this is something that you would run toward the end of your project um, just to validate that everything is, is done properly within your project. So here I'm going to choose my collection as example and go into validation example. And you can see I have some model files attached. There's one in here that doesn't have the same naming format. Um, but this could be a large set of models. And so uh, we're going to demonstrate how this can help you uh, check your validations. So we'll run this on all these models. And we'll come over to the next tab, which is pre-built job checks. So first, we're going to check the job file and check all the model files with that to ensure that file name format matches a regex uh, string. So you can enter in any regex string that is functional. There's some websites out there that can help generate this and figure out what you need. Um, but you can put in a regex string in here and then um, it will check the file name formats to make sure that they match or that they do not match. The next one is a list of file names and paths. And the last one is if there's any missing files. So these are selectable items. And any of these that are unselected, it won't run that part of the report. But we'll just go ahead and have them all selected so that everything runs on the job. We'll click Next. And now we have Model Pre-Built Checks. So let's uh, select all of these again. And we have different checks in here. So Property sets do not match. This is going to check the job model file versus the job standards file. If there's a property set in the model file that does not exist in the JSF, the job standards file, then uh, it will flag that file for you and what the property set name is. Properties do not match. Again, similar to this, this is looking at properties within each property set to verify that those aren't matched with the, with the JSF. Property sets not attached. This is going to generate a list and account of all the objects and entities in all the job model files that do not have property sets attached. That way, it will help you identify if you've missed some um, uh, objects or entities in your files. If there's any empty property values, it's going to pull and report that out for you. If you put any um, text in your values that, um, that are meant to be placeholders to be filled out at a later date, you can put a string of text in here and it will find all those entries for you and identify that. And then any property sets values that are using a list definition setting would then populate here in this um, output. We'll click Next. And then on this last one, let me remove this check and we'll recreate this. But we're going to create custom checks. So I want to do a check that, uh, let's say, finds all pipe lengths greater than 100. So I can give my check a name. We have the ability to check the format of the value or the value itself. So I want the value. And then what's the result um, that you want? Do you want it to fail or do you want it to count? Um, so you can pick those things here. I want it to count and list in this case. And then I'm going to pick add or remove properties. And so this is going to be my property sets. So I'm going to come down into gravity pipe and I'm going to make sure to pick the values. And I'm going to use the 3D link center to center. And then I'm going to minimize that. And I'm also going to do pressure pipe and come down into the 3D link center to center and apply. So now I've got two properties that it's checking on all entities if those exist. And 
then it's going to check the lengths on those. Um, and we can do that by adding a filter here. So you have the ability to do one filter at a time or multiple filters at a time. In this case, I just want one. So I'm gonna find all lengths that are greater than 100. And you can put more conditions in here. It'll, fill, it'll check these properties based off of multiple conditions if you want. If you wanted greater than but less than, you could do that. Um, in this case, I'm just gonna do greater than. So now I have my filter or my, my custom check made. And again, you wanna make sure that's selected when it's this gray um, and the icon's blue, you know that it's selected. And we'll click next. And then what type of report do you wanna generate? We have the options to do HTML, Excel, and uh, or both. So we'll do, go ahead and do both. I'll demonstrate what both output as. We'll run validate. It could take a minute to run. It's gonna run through every file and it's running through the job file first, and then it's run through each model file that you selected and checking the entities um, for all those um, comparisons that it's running. All right, looks like everything is done. Now keep in mind the length of time that that is, takes to process is gonna depend on the number of model files and the number of entities in every file. That's going to be the same for a lot of these tools that utilize AC Core Console and how uh, effective it's going to be at, you know, as far as processing. Um, some of these could take a lot longer time if you have a lot of entities that it has to check through. Um, because it is checking through all the supported entity and object types um, and checking to verify if any of these property sets match that and if they attach and, and all that um, jazz so all right so now we're ready to open uh we can open the excel report the html report or we can open the report folder from here let's start with the excel report so here from the excel report we can see we have the files tab this is showing us all the the job data and if it caught any issues and what they were the checks that were run and the resulting messages. And then we have elements, and this has given us all the elements in the files and what property sets are attached to them, um, what checks they're tied to, and whatnot. The HTML report gives us a bit more information and is more of a deliverable. Um, that's a nice report, um, the way that it comes out is uh, note at the top we have the job tab. This is for the job itself. And then the subsequent tabs are on each model uh, because we are performing checks on multiple models. Um, so we've reported everything out like this. So depending on the number of models you have, you could have a number of tabs up here to go through. All right, so for the job, we did the, the, the regex string to check the naming, and it did find that this job or this model file did not match, um, and so that's been reported out. The file names and paths are listed here and show um, you know, all the paths to all the model files and where they're saved at. And then if there was any missing files, it would show up in this area. <clears throat> then we'll go to the model tab, or each model, Go to the post drainage first, come down under model pre-built checks. There's no property sets that do not, do not match, um, no properties that do not match, and then we had property sets not attached. So we can see there's a number of uh, supported entity types that do not have property sets attached to them, and you may want to go back and find those objects using the handle um, and locate them to help you uh, make sure that the property sets do get attached if you need it. Um, empty property values, here's a list of all the empty property values it found on which entities they were. Um, there was no placeholder values in that file. And then we have all the, all the uh, property sets and the entities handles uh, that are using list definitions. And this file did not have any 
any pipes so there's no uh, custom check performed. Let's go over to the utility design which has got all our piping and we'll see some of the same data in here. So I'd like to point this out. In the utility file there are pipes and pressure pipes and it didn't find any pipes greater than 100 on my custom check. So the reason why this happened, and this is a great example, is those custom checks are performed on every object, and that object did not have both the gravity pipe and the pressure pipe property set on it, and that's why it failed. So we're going to redo this. We're coming back into our job validation, and I'm going to rerun this uh, example validation file on just the utility file because that's all I need. I'm going to deselect job, deselect model prebuilt, and I'm going to come in and make a new property set for my custom check. I'm going to call this pipes greater than 100, value, count and list, and now I'm going to come into gravity pipe, come down to my values, 3D center to center, apply, add, greater than 100. Save that one. Then I'm going to create an additional one and I'm going to call this pressure pipes greater than 100 value count and list. Because this is checking the property sets by the way uh, um, as well. So it's not the um, the links should be matching as long as the files are current and have been saved. That's one thing to keep in mind with this because it is tied to the property sets. So now we have a check for gravity pipes and one for pressure pipes. We'll go next and let's go ahead and update both reports. We'll let this run. All right, let's open up the HTML report. And now if I go into the utility design and scroll all the way down, now we should find here that we found some gravity pipes that are greater than 100 in length and some pressure pipes that are also greater than 100 in length. So these are ways you can use the validation um, functionality of SDT. Now, once you have your reports um, ran and if you want to access them, you can always do that from the uh, open job validation report um, button on the ribbon or on the job explorer. And that's all to explain for now on the job validation tool for SDT. In the next video, we'll go run through a summary of all of SDT and what SDT can do for managing our property set data in our file.